Police in Nigeria have ordered the creation of a new base for officers and the deployment of special forces in a remote village in northwest Kaduna State, where nearly 300 school students were abducted by armed bandits last Thursday. Timothy Obiezu reports from Abuja. The Nigerian police chief, Kayode Egbetokun, announced plans for the new base and the deployment during a visit with Kaduna Governor Ubasani on Tuesday. He said the steps will help restore residents' confidence in their safety while security forces continue the search for the missing students. Last Thursday, armed bandits on motorbikes invaded an elementary school in the village of Kuriga in Kaduna State and abducted 287 school students, the highest single abduction of students in years. Days after the attack, in a separate incident, bandits kidnapped 61 people from Kaju district, about 150 kilometers away. The new police base will be in Kuriga and deployment of extra officers to the area has begun. Egberto says authorities are working to secure the abductees' release. We are launching the Special Intervention Squad for Kaduna State, if only to give confidence to the people. The men will be deployed. And with the support that you have pledged to give, I'm sure that um, the community will start to feel safe again. Governor Sani is hopeful the police operations will be successful. We are extremely confident that uh, the school children, by the grace of God, will come back up safely. And uh, I'm also uh, happy with uh, the decision by the instructor of police to uh, quickly deploy a uh, movement base in the Kuriga community. Last week, local media reported more than 300 women and children were kidnapped in northeastern Borno State by Islamic militants while they were gathering firewood. Insecurity is a major challenge for President Bola Tinubu, who launched an initiative called Renewed Hope after assuming office last May. The recent kidnappings are blamed in part on the absence of security forces in those remote areas. Last month, the president met with all 36 state governors to discuss decentralizing Nigeria's police force and creating a police arm for each state. Analyst Kabiru Adam of Beacon Security says, if organized properly, this could be a step in the right direction. There are gaps within the security architecture. I am supportive of the decentralization of policing. But I think what we need more than anything is accountability. So that by the time we create the state um, for police, that accountability element that has been created at the federal level will trickle down to the state level. Years of fighting Islamist militants and crime gangs have stretched Nigerian security forces thin. Many are hoping the creation of new bases and state police arms will help keep the kidnappers away. Timothy Obizu, VOA News, Abuja, Nigeria. Nigeria's president has ordered security forces not to pay a ransom for the release of more than 250 school pupils seized by government last week, the country's information minister said on Wednesday. According to the French news agency AFP, relatives say the kidnappers have demanded a large payment for the return of the students abducted from their school in Kuriga village in northwestern Kaduna state on Thursday. Guinea's military government on Wednesday evening announced a 29-member cabinet nearly a month after junta leader Kona Mamadou Dumuya abruptly dissolved the government. Dawuda Mohamed Kamara is editor-in-chief of At Espars FM. He tells me the new administration includes some old and new faces, including four women. Let me tell you, uh, James, uh, we must start by saying that uh, the 29 ministers, according to the structure of the government, we are appointed uh, this evening. Of the 29 ministers, 16 are new, and seven are uh, changed their department, and the others uh, have been confirmed in their position. As for the minister, women, let me say, we only have uh, four women in this government, two are new and two are old for the, the, the last government. At the same time, uh, the new prime minister has been speaking about when the country can return to democratic rule. What did he have to say? 
Indeed, the Prime Minister Amadou Uriba said this during an interview he gave to our colleagues at uh, R5. That was on Tuesday. For him, it's not at all possible to hold all the elections this year, 2024. According to him, only the referendum can be held this year. And for the purpose, not only the presidential election, they can't, uh, and if they can't do it, all good will be held. In 2025. What does this new timetable mean now uh, in terms of what ECOWAS wants? Yes, that's the question everyone is uh, asking today because the engagement that they are taking with uh, the ECOWAS is to end the transition at the end of this year, 2024. But uh, this announced from the Prime Minister can take us to the question to know what are these years of with the is there is any new legislation between the two institutions, let me say CNFD in Guinea and the Ecco uh, members? For the moment, no uh, response to that question. And the Prime Minister Bauri was saying that uh, they will try, they, they will come on and see the Ecco and explain what is going on in Guinea today. If Really, they can understand that the elections can be uh, here this year or uh, next year. That's the question all people are asking today. And we think uh, maybe the next week and or the week coming, we'll see what the Echo Wars will give uh, as a uh, response to this announcement. Kenyans on Wednesday welcomed a government decision to halt plans to deploy at least 1,000 police officers to Haiti following the unprecedented violence that erupted in the Caribbean nation. Kenya had agreed last October to lead a UN-authorized international police force to Haiti, but the country's top court in January ruled this was unconstitutional, in part because of lack of reciprocal agreements on such deployments between the two countries. Nairobi resident Ramek Ochiang said he was not surprised by the court ruling. Our children, who were going to be killed outside in Haiti, now are safe, he said. As a Kenyan, this is a situation which we saw before, even the courts ruled against it. But the outcome has not uh, that much maybe scared me because we knew that it was something which was not going to be achieved. Kenya's President William Ruto said that he and the Haitian Prime Minister Aliel Henry had witnessed the signing of the reciprocal agreement between Kenya and Haiti on March 1st, clearing the path for the deployment. Haiti has no government. It, was, it has no structure. So it's not advisable. You know, let's say like if our government really cares about our people, they wouldn't even consider doing that deploying Kenyan police to Haiti, said Rose Wanjiku, a student. Under the plan, the UN-backed multinational police led by Kenyan officers was to help quell gang violence that has long plagued Haiti. But violence escalated sharply since February 29th, with gunmen burning police stations, closing the main international airports and raiding the country's two biggest prisons, releasing more than 4,000 inmates. Thank you so much for watching and peace.